We have more for your ears only. I'm David Alpern. I'm Melissa Axelberth with a quote from the news. The jury has made its decision on what happened here. We respect it, but that doesn't mean it's the truth. That was defense attorney Jack J. McMahon after Dr. Kermit Gosnell was sentenced to life in prison without parole in connection with the apparent murder of newborns after unsuccessful abortions. Also last week, the only abortion clinic in North Dakota sued to block a new state law that could shut it down. Now this. She didn't become a great actress. She didn't become somebody anybody knew. She didn't do anything other than love her children and raise them with with so much care. And so she's taught me a lot about the importance of that. That's what film star Angelina Jolie told ABC News she learned from her mother's life, leading her to mother half a dozen natural and adopted children of her own. What she learned from her mother's death from ovarian cancer at age 56 led to Jolie's announcement last week that she underwent genetic testing and a double mastectomy to lower the risk that breast cancer would steal her from her family and that she'd soon have her ovaries removed as well. The surgeries and going public about them won Jolie much praise for bravely managing her health risk despite the obvious threat to her movie beauty image and for prompting other women largely less dependent on their looks to consider it as well. Maybe too many other women, other experts warned. They noted that the mutated gene BRCA1 that testing found in Jolie shows up in only 1 in 500 women and causes only between 5 and 10 percent of all breast cancers. More broadly, new science suggests that even basic mammography may do at least as much harm as good, missing the fastest spreading most fatal cancers while prompting discomfort, often disfiguring, and expensive treatment of tumors that might never prove fatal. To talk about the Angelina effect and the mixed messages about cancer testing and treatment generally, for your ears only, we're joined again by Fran Visco, president of the National Breast Cancer Coalition, whose website is breastcancerdeadline2020.org. Welcome back to the program. Thank you very much. News reports say that Jolie's story prompted a significant increase in telephone queries and Internet searches about preventive mastectomies. Do you think her star power will make the option more popular than is medically necessary? I think we do run the risk of that happening. Um, You know, we all respect her very difficult personal choice, and she was very brave to go public with it. But we have to stress the fact that her situation is extremely rare. And most women, the vast, vast majority of women, do not require genetic counseling or genetic testing or prophylactic mastectomy. Would a massive demand for the kind of genetic testing Jolie had bring the price down from the current $4,000, maybe pressure government and private insurance companies to cover it more than they do now? Well, the demand um, is double-edged because if there's a massive demand, most of the people demanding it do not need it. And there should not be insurance coverage for tests that are not needed, that are not medically necessary. So would it bring the price down? I don't know because Myriad Genetics has a monopoly on the test. What's your best advice on which women should seek the testing and how they should decide on preventive mastectomy? Well, women requiring the testing first should undergo genetic counseling. And there are criteria for the women who should go and have that type of counseling. And you can find that information on the website of the National Cancer Institute. But it's primarily a very significant family history of the disease, not, you know, a cousin third removed or even first removed. It's a significant family history. Broadening the discussion, you were generally sympathetic to a recent New York Times magazine story about the very limited success of long-touted annual mammograms in reducing actual breast cancer deaths. Talk about that. Well, the reality is that we haven't reduced deaths by very much, uh, despite the billions of dollars we invested in breast cancer and the decades of raising awareness of the disease. But we have increased mammography usage, and we've increased incidence because we're finding many breast cancers that will never become life-threatening. Times change. You know, science moves forward. We know a lot more. We're more aware of breast cancer. We have more treatments. So the effectiveness or the usefulness of mammography has diminished quite a bit. 
but the risk of mammography has increased. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean by that you want to screen a healthy population to save lives. We're not saving very many lives at all by mammography, but we are increasing women getting unnecessary toxic treatments, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, that in themselves cause other cancers. So it isn't a simple message, early detection saves lives. It is really a very complicated situation that each woman should very carefully understand and analyze before she makes a personal decision to be screened. Beyond testing, you've long argued that the government medical insurance complex is too wedded to familiar approaches to breast cancer and too wary of new, potentially more effective approaches. What are the most important factors in that inertia? I think it's mostly the fact that breast cancer has become a huge business, a very large infrastructure that is more intent on keeping itself going than actually figuring out how we can end the disease. How do we prevent women from getting breast cancer? How can we cure it for those who already have it? so that we keep doing the same thing over and over again, and we're not getting anywhere with that approach. You know, we need to shake things up, which is why my organization set a deadline to know how to end breast cancer by January 2020. We need to completely change the way we approach the issues in breast cancer. Well, give us some idea. What are the kinds of approaches that we don't generally hear about? We really don't focus enough on primary prevention, on stopping women from getting breast cancer. And we don't focus on the question of how do we stop breast cancer from spreading to other organs. We talk a lot about curing breast cancer that has already spread, which is an incredibly important issue. But if breast cancer stays in the breast, it wouldn't kill anyone. It's the spread to other organs that is deadly. How do we stop that particular process? Those are the two areas that we are focusing on with our deadline campaign. Many women who've had mastectomies are very, very affected by this emotionally. Do you think, Angelina Jolie, coming out like this will make things easier for them? I think it is, a, uh, it will resonate with women emotionally who have had mastectomies. Someone like Angelina Jolie and you know the role she plays in the world of beauty and sexy and talented and all of that. And she lopped off her breasts and she is pretty clear about the fact that that doesn't change any of the aspects of who she is. That's a very important message to women. Fran Visco is president of the National Breast Cancer Coalition, whose website is breastcancerdeadline2020.org. Quote from the news, I don't want to appear on another program or climb another mountain. That was Barbara Walters announcing that next year she'll end her long TV career of interviews of the powerful and famous that some critics said blurred the line between real journalism and celebrity entertainment. Next, the not-so-great Gatsby, a new Star Trek, and more for your ears only. 